really excited for tonight. We were just saying it's uh, the, you know the day after Remembrance Day in the UK, and uh, so a very appropriate time for us to be telling this story. Obviously, you know, it being the hundredth anniversary of uh, the outbreak of the First World War and the Tower of London celebrations, we feel like this is part of the kind of national conversation at the moment. It feels a good, uh, appropriate day to be here. It's, um, you know, it's celebrating a job well done. It's celebrating the bravery of these guys. It's also uh, remembering the, the soldier who lost his life that day and sharing this carpet with them and with um, the parents of Corporal Wright is a, is a great responsibility and a good feeling, yeah. Mm. So what I'm going to ask you guys is, what was it about the story that one was, you want to get involved in this project, want to be part of it? Well, we were looking, I think, you are right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, well, I'll tell you what we're looking for and then Tom will yeah. tell you what he found. So I think we were actually, we were sort of, we'd been discussing Paul, myself, Tom, uh, the fact that there weren't really any modern British war films and that very rarely did we sort of see the lives and the existence of British soldiers on screen. I think there's a fair bit of TV, um, but not in a sort of theatrical sense. And Paul and Tom, I think, were kicking around looking for some ideas for, you know, how would you make a British war film, what would be in it, what is the British war experience, uh, and sort of came across this story. Yeah. Um, and, and, and initially looking for uh, research material on which to base a fictional uh, movie, but then we came across the story of this patrol and this, uh, you know, horrendous day. And the more we dug into it, and the more we started talking to the people who were actually there, we felt the more exciting uh, dramatic opportunity was to try and tell it, you know, as it happened almost real time, one location, one group of guys, uh, a, a unique incident in the sense of Russian mines, you know, left over from a war 30 years before, um, you, you know, a, a group of guys uh, just stuck, totally stranded and having to use their ingenuity and, and their sense of kinship to help them through it. And so the more, we, the more we spoke to them, the more research we did, the more we thought we couldn't, you know, we couldn't invent anything as compelling, as dramatic, as powerful as this. So then our objectives shifted to, to uh, doing this as faithfully and, as, and as, um, uh, with as much respect for, for them and their actions as, as we could. So you had a lot of contact with the uh, real veterans from that time? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I, I think sort of that, that built up slowly. Um, we've described it as this is the sort of the movie that Facebook made, actually, because you sort of, you meet one guy and then he puts you in touch with, you know, a few others. Very early on we met uh, Bob and Jem Wright, who are the parents of Corporal Wright, and we, we went and introduced ourselves to them and they were supportive of us, you know, but a bit wary. I think a lot of people w were wary as we went along, but... Um, at every stage we just tried to be honest about uh, you know, what we wanted to do. We didn't necessarily have a political message that we wanted to advocate. We didn't want to Hollywoodize this, didn't want to give it any, you know, different ending to the ending that actually happened. And so that, you know, was a sort of a slow snowball over about a year of, of being referred from one soldier to another to another and then getting in the car, going around the country, um, talking to them, and then trying to incorporate all of those uh, reports of what it was actually like there into the into the script and try and do right by all of them. So there were a lot involved in this filmmaking process. Were they on set as well? Were they, we had, were they there? Um, we didn't have any of the actual guys who were there with us on set. We had a bloke who was in their battalion who was on the same tour of 2006 so certainly knew more than half the guys who were in the minefield that day came out with us as a military advisor and sort of much earlier than that selected security which is his company Luke Hardy's company and Hugh Keir's company we work with them from the beginning of the year really uh, because we sort of knew that we'd have a I mean a military audience a pretty tough audience um, we knew that kind of being authentic if we're trying to tell a true story without fabricating any of it Part of that is getting the detail right. What did they wear? What are the badges on their arms? How they held their weapons? Lots of things that perhaps sometimes sort of a war film can gently ignore or not pay as much attention to. Uh, but we were pretty keen to um, be as true to that as possible. So, so the proof of the pudding will be whether the, an army audience thinks we got that right. So we'll find out later on tonight. So mm. nervous times. Yeah. Well, I watched it today and I have to say I was overwhelmed because I actually felt like I was on the field with them because it was so authentic and sometimes I had to look away because it was really tough. So you actually managed to make it as real as possible. Yeah. So, great well, job. Again, we hope we don't want it to be um, 
unpleasant for people to watch this, but it's, uh, you know, it is the truth, and we feel like uh, there is a dramatic journey for people to experience, and if they come away from it with maybe some uh, more educated sense of what life on the front line is like, then uh, that can't be a bad thing. Yeah, I definitely experienced that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Uh, not really. <laughs> I'm a man.